All right, I have something different for you today. If you like this, let me know. Okay, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. Let me set this up for you. Dr. Mike is a primary medicine doctor. He has a YouTube channel. He's a content creator. He is science based and evidence based. There's another guy, Dr. Daniel Amen, who is a psychiatrist. He uh, sells supplements. And he also does something called SPECT scanning of people's brains, which looks at brain activity. OK, he famously did such a scan of Kim Kardashian and found that she had lower activity. Sometimes he refers to it as lower flow in her frontal lobes. Now, you might say, so what? What does that mean? What's the normal range of activity? What are the implications of that? What is the baseline of frontal lobe activity if we just scan random people in the population who have no complaint or those are all good questions. Those are not questions that we necessarily got answered in this clip. But Dr. Mike brought on Dr. Amen to talk to him. I don't know if Dr. Amen was unprepared, but it did not go well for him. And this is a true clinic in beating back disinformation. I have a ton to say about this, but let's just start. And then I think you'll quickly kind of get a sense for for what is going on here. Kim Kardashian recently got some imaging done and you found some results on her. Tell me about that. She had sleepy frontal lobes. What does that mean? So SPECT is a study of relative blood flow. It looks at activity. She had less activity in the front third of her brain, which means it's going to go with things like forethought and judgment and impulse. OK, so he says she had lower f activity and blood flow, which is it? in her frontal lobes. This goes to um, impulse and and uh, uh, forethought and this sort of stuff. This is all basically nonsense. Spect measures relative blood flow, not cognition. It uh, there. We, we do not have evidence that reduced blood flow maps cleanly onto traits like forethought and impulse control and judgment. So the first question we should be asking is, have we compared people with high and low blood flow in that area to tests that assess cognition? And have we determined that there is a correlation? Forget about a causation. Is there even a correlation? And the way you would start to explore that is you would say, OK, Kim Kardashian has what I describe as low flow <laughs> in her frontal lobes. Let's get a thousand random people test their frontal lobe flow and then give them some kind of real cognitive test. Let's assess them in a number of different ways. Maybe you do neuropsych eval and an IQ test and whatever. And let's see if it's even correlated, because I don't know how many of you know about sort of the history of back pain, but there are lots of scenarios. It used to it used to be the case more. Hopefully now they're getting better at this, where you would say, I've got back pain. You go to the doctor. They say, let's get an MRI. You get an MRI of your back. They find some irregularity in your back and they say, well, You've got this irregularity. This is the cause of the back pain. Let's operate. You operate. The back pain's no better. And what we determined was that if you go out and you take random people in the population who have no back pain complaint and you give them an MRI, a lot of them have irregularities in their spine, some, you know, mild degeneration or whatever the case may be, but they don't have symptoms. And then you have to go and say, ah, that doesn't necessarily finding that on an MRI doesn't necessarily mean it's the cause of the symptom or of the pain. Anyway. So let's listen to, to Dr. Mike handle some of this. Pulse control and focus. She wanted to be better. Why doesn't every family medicine doctor, why does the American Psychiatric Association, American Academy of Neurology, why are they against this imaging? It doesn't fit the paradigm. Well, I'm reading but the largest agencies that represent neurologists, the psychiatrists. These are, it's like the, me saying something fully against the American Academy, Academy of Family Physicians without evidence to say why I'm disagreeing with them. Well, so Dr. Amen says, though the reason that this test, this scan isn't being recommended by the APA and the AAN is because it doesn't fit their paradigm. The truth is that this scan is not um, suggested because it is high. It has very low specificity. It has poor reproducibility. Meaning if you just even do the scan an hour later, Kim Kardashian's results might have been significantly different. And there is no proven impact on outcomes. The idea being if you identify low flow, it doesn't seem to be correlated with any particular outcome. Then they get into the topic of studies. I have 90 studies that I have published and I have the world's largest database. 
and I actually don't know what the point of us arguing about it is. I have more experience in this than anybody probably in the history of the world. <laughs> Having 90 studies that he authored, quantity isn't quality, number one. These papers that Daniel Amen has put together about this frontal lobe spec flow stuff, they're observational. They're not blinded. They're not randomized. They're conducted at his own clinics. But when you look at what independent reviews have criticized him for, they say it is not scientifically founded and clinically justified based on the data that we have. They then bring up the topic of randomized controlled trials, the gold standard. And here's what is said. And if you don't look, you don't know. But do we have the randomized control data to be able to back these things up? Give me an example and I'll tell you what the research is. Is there randomized control data on SPECT scans and their efficacy in a specific mental health condition? Yes. Which one? Well, which one do you want to talk about? Anyone. I mean, <laughs> if you go on PubMed. Well, can you name one right now? Gov today. You're the leading expert. So I'm a family yeah, medicine like doctor. Distinguishing, I don't know. So. Distinguishing post-traumatic stress disorder from traumatic brain injury. But that's not a randomized control. Now understand what he just did. Distinguishing two conditions based on imaging. That is very different than saying when we find low flow in the frontal lobes, it is correlated with certain cognitive traits. And therefore, we know that this is a specific enough test to give us actionable information. He's just like, oh, you there's there's PubMed on distinguishing traumatic brain injury from PTSD in the brain. OK, but what does that have to do with what we're looking at here? Study. I'm sorry. That's not a randomized controlled study. We're talking imaging. Yeah. This is not a pharmaceutical intervention where we're going to do. Well, a the goal of doing the imaging and, is to create more customizable treatments, as you said. And if you have customizable treatments, your outcomes should be better. That's the randomized controlled study. And our outcomes are better. We published a study. But that's on not the question I'm outcomes. asking. Randomized controlled data is really important. Wouldn't you say to develop a causal relationship? I'm sorry. Say this again. Randomized controlled <laughs> trial. All right. This, this is basically the whole thing. Now, I'm going to kind of give you the cheat sheet. You go to Daniel Amen's website and you really very quickly figure out what this seems to really be about, okay? Which is that he has supplements for all of this stuff, okay? You go to his website and he's got a brain and body power max and the neurovite plus multivitamin and he's got brain and body power and you just go into any one of these and you start looking at the ingredients that they contain and you start checking each one of these sets of ingredients against what is known in their use for any particular condition. And you very quickly realize that this all seems to kind of be nonsense. Now, I think it would be very interesting if we were able to design a study which could be done, which is you say, hey, you know what we're going to do? We are going to Rant, like I said earlier, we're going to take a thousand people. We're going to scan their frontal lobe activity. We are then going to give them tests to see if what we observe in a scan correlates with any kind of brain function. Uh, does it affect are, are there mood related things, cognition, memory, anything? And then if we find that there is a relationship, we could then do another randomized controlled trial where we give people what is this stuff? phosphatidylserine and acetyl L-carnitine and alpha lipoic acid and coenzyme Q10. And then it'll be totally randomized and blinded. And we will see whether then when we retest people after they have been given either, either a placebo or this stuff, whether it makes any difference. That's what Dr. Mike is talking about. But Dr. Amen would rather have celebrities show up, get a scan and say, you've got low blood, low flow in the frontal lobes. And then for 145 bucks a month or whatever, I've got supplements I can sell you, which might help with some of this stuff. Really nice job by Dr. Mike. I think we need way more of this. We've got a phenomenal bonus show for you today. We will talk fentanyl. We will talk the BBC being sued by Trump for $10 billion. And we will talk about a meeting between Erica Kirk and Candace Owens. Can you imagine? Sign up at joinpacman.com. And the gear store is back.
in time for the holidays, go to davidpackmancom slash gear and you will see all of the new items that are available, T-shirts and stickers and water bottles and hats and the whole thing. Many of these will get delivered before Christmas. DavidPackman.com slash gear. Check it out. Appreciate you watching. Stick around for this next video and don't forget to hit subscribe so you actually see our uploads. You can also catch the full podcast on Spotify and Apple podcasts.